Hello, uh, YouTube. Today I wanted to do a video about uh, processing an image in hydrogen, oxygen, oxygen, which means it's only a dual channel um, image. You have to capture hydrogen and oxygen and that's it. A lot of the nebula out there could be image like that. Uh, sulfur does bring a little bit more depth, but in some cases you don't have to. Um, for example, the object today called the Crescent Nebula, located in the Cygnus constellation, was formed by stellar wind from one of the Wolf Riot stars that kind of created all of that. So it's a beautiful little object that you can image in the HOO color scheme. And today I'm going to show you how I process that. The image itself is not perfect, the channels are not perfect, but I think we can get a good decent image out of it. So let's see how we do it. Let me switch back to PixInsight. So this is the telescope I used the uh, Officina Stellare uh, Ricci Cretian 12 inch, 12.5 inch. That's the size of the primary mirror. It's a very good telescope, uh, an astrograph. It's uh, 1680 millimeters at 5.4. I use the QHY 600 Pro, uh, chroma filters, uh, ZW174, a little puck camera to, sorry, the mini, not the puck, to focus. Uh, to guide and then the Asado 3 inch for as a focuser, computer at the top, hub to control the temperatures, and the uh, Paramount ME1 monster mount. <laughs> I think you can probably carry me as a telescope. That's how good this is. So this was taken in 2021. It's about about 15 hours of information. Um, I think seven and a half hydrogen, seven and a half oxygen. I was suffering some. Um, not chroma, uh, sphere collaboration at the time due to a baffle. I've kind of mentioned this in some of my videos. Uh, it was a secondary baffle that was added for bigger chips uh, to kind of remove any stray light that was coming off axis. But in my case, it was just creating these weird um, star effects. So let's get into the data. So here's the oxygen data. Actually, the crescent looks amazing in oxygen. Um, there's also a soap bubble nebula, but it's just a little bit off my field of view. Um, again, you can see the stars are not perfect, the concentric circles are there. And the most annoying one, there's a really big star in the center of this nebula, and it's pretty obvious here. But I captured the outline of the nebula, it looks good. The What you look for in your stacks uh, is for everything to be flat. Now there's a little bit of vignetting here, but I don't think that's going to affect us. It has to be flat. You can't have weird shadows or gradients. If you do, then you have to work on it with things like dynamic background extraction or better flats. HA, stunning, no questions. Besides the star and the concentric circles, don't really have a problem with it. And there's, I think, a airplane or satellite. We're not gonna worry about that. This is in a very rich uh, hydrogen area. So there's hydrogen in the nebula, hydrogen around. So it's pretty cool. What I did do is uh, use blood exterminator on the stacked files. So that's all I've done. The files are in linear format. They have not been stretched, so they're good to go. So how do we do this? I've actually tried to do this in the past with custom luminance, synthetic luminance channels where you combine 60% oxygen, 40% hydrogen. It, this doesn't work that well. So we're gonna make it simple. We choose hydrogen for red, for green, we're gonna choose oxygen. For green, for blue, we're gonna choose oxygen. That's it. We press the little circle to apply. This is gonna stack. Remember, these are 61 megapixel images, so it takes a bit, not too much. Now we're done with the stacks, we're good. Let's stretch the image. It's gonna look a bit weird. Yeah. So the channels are still linked. We go to intensity transformations, screen transfer function. We unlink them, ta-da. This actually looks decent. I don't like the aspect ratio. Oh, so I don't like the framing, so I'm going to rotate it. This is more like it. This is what I really like. Um, still, the rings are annoying. There's a little bit of noise from oxygen, but it's, it's workable. So, as I always do, kind of crop out the excess a little bit, just because I don't want it to interfere with some of the processes I use. I go to all processes, dynamic crop, crop it a little bit. It's never a bad idea to crop some of the corners. The cheaper the telescope, the worse it is over there. Um, so right now we're good, we're good. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stretch this. 
by opening up intensity transform, a screen transfer function and historic histogram transformation. And this is pretty simple. You press the little nuclear button to stretch it. You drag the triangle in the middle and then you apply. Congratulations, you've stretched the image. Now I'm going to remove the green because we don't need it. Uh, our eyes perceive more green, but in this case, this is actually what I'm looking for. This is actually really good. So now I'm going to duplicate this and I'm going to remove the stars so I can work on the nebulosity. You just drag it, pull it out, you get a duplicate image. Now we're going to do remove the stars. We open Star Exterminator. If you haven't checked this out, get it. It's pretty cool. It's easier, much easier than StarNet. It handles some of these big stars a lot easier. And if you have this GPU set up, as you can see in my case, it's using the temporary RAM. It's going to be pretty fast. So usually if you use the CPU, it's going to be 20 minutes. This, I think, I don't know, 30 seconds. It takes a little while to start. Here we go. Almost crashed the software, uh, but it's happening. So it's removing all the stars. As you can see, it's at 40 some percent. 50 now and counting down. So after we do this, we're going to stress the nebulosity, play with it a little bit. Not much to do. And we're done. Looks good. There's some spots here. Now you can clean this up in Photoshop if you want. I don't think it's going to make a big difference. They're not that big. The center star is still a little bit annoying. Maybe and I'll, I'll fix that in the future, but I'm not going to worry about that. So my image is primed for some stretching. Uh, some more stretching and some more else curves. I'm going to open curves transformation from intensity transformations curves. I'm going to open my little preview window. You can have it here, whatever, it doesn't matter. I'm going to pull a little bit from the highlights, tone down a little bit of the darks, a little bit of saturation. And I think this doesn't require any more. Oh, actually, I'll do one more. So let's take a look. Yeah, the saturation is too much. But the brightness is kind of good. So a little bit, maybe a bit more saturation. Okay. This looks decent. Now, one of the things you can try to do is pull some of these details back from here. So we're going to do that. Go to Processes, Mask, Generation, Radiant Selection. Open your preview and just focus on just the nebulosity. There's a little bit of nebulosity on the right. So let's pull that in. Maybe just focus on the center part. I like the mask. I'm going to press the, the square to apply. Let's create it. Now I'm going to mask this specific image with it by dragging the name onto the left side where this name is. Now this is all masked, as you can see. And we're going to pull some of that um, dynamic range back with HDR multi transform from all processes, HDR multi-transform. Now I'm going to try nine uh, iterations and I've applied, this will apply to a light, to lightness and the lightness mask. So let's see what happens. Again, depending on your computer, pixel insight can be really fast or it can be pretty good. Um, just have patience. You know, you'll get there in the end. Um, here we go. So let's see what happened. This is what we get, what was there before. So you can see there's a little bit more brightness around here and it's really blowing out some of the detail. So this is actually much cleaner. My goal here is to capture this uh, oxygen bubble. I've tried it many times. I've had fires, so my skies are smoky and all kind of conditions and I never got it. This is the probably the best I've got, but I'm gonna give it another try this year with a bigger telescope to see what happens. I can try to do another six iterations. I'm not sure if it's going to give me better results, but let's take a look. So in the end, you have to kind of understand that every time you're trying to pull some of these details back, you have to see what applies better. Now, if you like this more, actually the six iterations look better. So I'm going to keep it this way. Uh, I could also go back and start with six iterations so that I don't apply multiples. Let's see what happens. Um, you learn what works. Here we go. Actually, this is pretty good. I do like it. So it hasn't messed with the regular with the rest of the image. It looks pretty good. I'm going to disable the mask, get rid of the mask. So now 
not much more to do, actually, it's pretty simple. So we're going to do some noise reduction. So go to all processes, noise exterminator, again, focus on collecting data, calibrating your data. If you can find ways to make your workflow easier, don't be ashamed. Don't need to use pixel mask for, pixel mask for everything or some kind of fancy process. Use whatever works and gets the best results. Nobody cares in the end. Whoever publishes an image or NASA, they don't, they don't care. So this is good. I like the detail. The bubble looks good. Um, the clouds look good. Let's put the stars back in. So how do we do that? We go back to this image. We check, generate star, uh, star image on the RC star exterminator. Drag it on there. Wait. That's part of the astrophotography. You wait for the data to be captured, you wait for processing, and you wait for people to react to your image. Wait is 99% of the time. So this is extracting the stars. It'll take a couple of minutes, seconds, sorry. If you haven't, if you, if you haven't set up your GPU to be the de facto tensor flow um, and to use your, the CUDA cores in it, especially if you have an NVIDIA card, check out uh, Quay the Lazy Geek video on uh, YouTube he explains it and it's pretty simple so we've extracted the stars I'll revert because I want to mask I will make these stars into a grayscale image because that's what I want I will mask my original stack and like every single other time actually this time I'll do it differently usually I enhance the stars but in this case because of the problems I had with uh, the concentric circles I won't. So now what I've done is I've opened pixel math from processes, all processes, pixel math. It's here. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna copy the name of this image. I'm gonna put it in here. Make sure that RGBK expression is checked. I've masked the stars. I'm gonna invert the mask. So now the stars are protected and all we're pulling in is nebulosity. I'm gonna hide the mask and I'm gonna apply. So now, it turns out it did a good job. The bubble is there, it's very visible. There's detail around with the nebulosity that's there. Now, not all the stars are perfect as you can see, but that's what I had with a telescope. You might have a telescope that has some small coma or curvature or any other thing. Here's a secret. In, that, in this case, I'll just use this starless image and post it. It's fine. It can't be plate solved. I don't care about plate solving. I care about producing the best image with the telescope and the equipment at the time that I can. So I'm actually going to clean this up in Photoshop and I will post it at the end of the video. But I wanted to do a video of how I process hydrogen, oxygen, oxygen data. Now you can process this the way you want. This is how I do it. And I think ultimately this is one of the best crescent nebulas I've kind of uh, capture, I captured this quite a few times with a 10 inch, 12 inch, this 12 and a half inch, and the RH, the Ricardo Hondas. Um, it's, I think, as good as I, I, I could do uh, with the equipment and uh, with my processing technique, but I think in the future, I might just be able to get a frame that focuses mostly on the crescent and do maybe 50 hours to make this happen. Until then, I will leave you with this image. And if you have any other questions, reach out to me on social media or on YouTube. And good luck and see you next time. Bye.